Scene three, take two, removing radiator coolant. It's actually easy to get to the radiator drain once we know where it is. When it's on the ground, it's very hard to find, unless you know where it is. But once you know where it is, you can then get to it even when it's on the ground. What you do is you just go through the wheel well. Uh, if you turn the, turn the tire out or remove it like it is here, you can reach in and I'll give you a, a view here. See, I'm on the uh, passenger side. If you reach under here, you, you can feel it. And you might have to get in there with a, a wrench. I've got a bucket. It's an orange Home Depot bucket. I'm turning it. Nothing's coming out. Now it's coming out. Of course, it missed the bucket. You can hear that, that sound. And, you know, there's certain sounds that cross all ethnic and religious and national boundaries. And that's the sound that makes you have to go to the bathroom. When you hear that water, coming out of a Corvette ZR1 and dripping into an orange bucket. Anyone in the world would recognize that sound. I remember when, in the younger days, when I sounded more like that than, than I do now. That's what happens when you get older. Those were the days Well, we might as well let it drain because uh, it's a big bucket and it's no. It's going to make you blush. We'll just, here we go. You can see it's not me making that noise. I'm just standing here, making a video, fixing the car. I'd say that's like a three beer drain. We don't leave anything out here. We, we, we're showing this in real time. This is live. Those other videos, they, they skip a lot of stuff. I'm going to have to describe the coolant draining into that orange bucket underneath the radiator. It's still got a pretty good flow there. It's a uh, reasonably well-directed flow. There's, there's one main flow, and then there's a secondary one. And then there's a trickle about four inches away. Luckily, they're all hitting the bucket. There is a slight amount of moisture on the shop floor as a result of uh, the initial targeting, which you never get. There's nothing more unpredictable than, when, than where a radiator is going to drain. Lots of times, some cars, you know, it drains out and there's something below its trajectory, like a, a cross member or something, and, and then it hits that, splashes all over the place. That does not seem to be the case with this, although there is, okay, I see what's happening. It's using the radiator shroud, which is fiberglass, as kind of a gutter, and it's finding its way out of a small hole, which is allowing for that small sub-drip. All in all, though, it, 
keeps it pretty uh, pretty well managed. It's one of the one of the nicest radiator draining designs that I've I've personally encountered. Not that I've seen a lot of them. Well, this I'm sure this is enough. There's no reason to drain it completely. We'll be doing that in a future show when we remove the radiator for an upcoming air conditioning servicing. Or maybe we won't be removing the radiator for that. I'm not sure. I can't remember. I'll have to watch my video to see if you got to remove a radiator to change an air conditioning condenser on this particular vehicle. Okay, I'm going to reach in there now and... Uh, I'm going to stop the flow. Fingers are getting a little wet. Now that shroud, you got to watch it on your uh, garments. Okay. Let me make sure it's snug because I might I might forget to do it later. It's finger finger snug, and. Uh, It's a hazardous job because you can get some some car dirt on your cuffs if you're not really proficient. All right, very good. We we've got so now we've got the battery disconnected. We've got the coolant uh, mostly removed, certainly more than sufficiently removed. We're probably several inches below the level that we'd have to be to avoid the predicament of water pouring out of things after we remove other things. So we'll move on to the next step.